Hi, welcome to the channel. So I recently just took the intake manifold off of my Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera. And if you're not familiar, the first gen Superleggera came with the original five liter Evenfire V10. And then they swapped over to a 5.2 liter Oddfire V10 that sounds totally different and is a completely different beast. So I view this motor as being very old school Lamborghini and then having a little bit of Audi DNA kind of sprinkled throughout. So I have this intake manifold on the bench and to be honest with you, it was quite a pain to take it out. Um, I'm gonna be detailing that in a different video to save you the pain, but um, I have the intake manifold on my bench and I'm really excited to share with you the amazing engineering and detail that went into this cast aluminum piece and um, every little intricate part of this intake manifold. So let's get onto the bench and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So first off, I just wanna know how the beauty of this, this intake manifold. I think it's just amazing. Um, I'm putting my hand next to it so you can just see the substantial size of this, of this just monolithic piece. And um, I, I really feel like this is very old school Lamborghini. Um, there is some Audi Volkswagen DNA uh, scattered through here and scattered throughout the motor, but um, I, feel it's, I feel it's like the best part of Audi and then there's the best part of Lamborghini because this is just a beautiful intake manifold. So it's actually three pieces. So you have the upper plenum assembly, you have the, I guess you could call it the middle section, and then you have these two lower runners on both sides. And the lower runners actually hold the, uh, the fuel rails and uh, the fuel injectors for the uh, port injection. And they only made this intake manifold for not that many years, from 2005 to 2008. And then when we, they went with a uh, 5.2 liter V10 with the fuel stratified injection um, in the LP560, uh, the R8 V10, and the, subsequently the Huracan, um, this intake manifold is actually plastic. So um, a lot of Audi DNA in that, that motor. This is just kind of the last bastion after uh, Audi Volkswagen bought Lamborghini. So the 2004 to 2006 cars came with Magneti Morelli uh, throttle bodies, and they're a lot more square compared to these Bosch units. Um, these Bosch units are also a little bit bigger, uh, but the thing is, is you can't just swap over a Bosch throttle body onto a Magneti Morelli uh, intake manifold. So on the earlier cars, the throttle bodies actually communicated with the ECU on a different parameter than these Bosch throttle bodies do. What they actually do with these Bosch throttle bodies is they, they actually have a throttle interrogator um, in between the ECU and these Bosch throttle bodies. So that way you can properly interpret what the throttle body position is and um, all the parameters that are required to uh, actually actuate these properly. So you can't just swap over a Bosch throttle body onto a Magneti Morelli uh, intake manifold and call it a day. On the 2004 cars, this intake manifold was completely different. Um, they really did a number over on it in 2005 and really revised it for uh, uh, just making it larger overall, just this intake plenum, and uh, they really changed the overall design of it. The 2004 cars, on the top of the intake manifold, the uh, lettering is actually a little bit more solid. It's more of like a solid bar instead of four solid bars on each bank. And the uh, casting is a lot smaller for the intake plenum. So right at the top of the intake manifold, we have the MAP sensor, which is Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. And then there's also inside here a uh, temperature sensor as well. So this is really one of the main sensors that we use to uh, operate the engine efficiently. These early five liter V10s didn't have uh, mass airflow sensors. So this tuning parameter that uses a MAP sensor is called speed density. And it's a little bit less accurate from my perspective when it comes to uh, metering the air comparative to mass airflow sensors, but you can still get a good tune on it. And um, for simplicity's sake, just having this sensor over two mass airflow sensors that are common to fail um, is, is a win-win in my book. So always nice to see that. And if you ever go with a turbo build, you can actually swap this out for a higher PSI rated MAP sensor uh, located in this position. Um, you can get a, even get a MAP sensor like this from a, like a turbo beetle and it has a higher uh, pressure rating than, than this one. And uh, it just swaps right in. So always nice to see that. Let's take this intake plenum off and we can take a look inside. So first off, I wanted to note how beautiful this casting is. So you have the crinkle coat finish on the outside with the classic Lamborghini logo. And then you have this wonderful casting on the inside. Again, made by uh, Magneti Morelli. Um, but then you see the, the Bosch auto bodies on here. But amazing, wonderful casting. 
Um, no, no Audi logos on here. This was all Lamborghini, all Lamborghini engineering and design. Then you can see co-located co in the middle is the sensing region for the manifold absolute pressure sensor. So this intake manifold is just absolutely stunning. Um, this is all one single monolithic cast aluminum piece. You might say, why do I have a V10, but there's 20 ports? And this is because it's a two-stage intake manifold. So what a two-stage inlet manifold is trying to do is it's trying to optimize for both low-end torque and then high-end power. So we have these long runners that go from this port all the way over to the actual um, inlet on the cylinder head on the opposite side. So it actually runs underneath and then down. And this is true for all of these ports on the, the outermost portion. And then for the innermost ports, these are optimized for high-end power. So these are vacuum actuated butterfly valves that when you turn the valve, it actually bypasses these long runners entirely. And then you get a straight shot right into the cylinder head. So this optimizes the airflow path for both low RPM operation and high RPM, high horsepower operation. And I'm really just honestly impressed that it's just a single monolithic piece. I love the hand polished velocity stacks on each one of these. I think it looks just absolutely stunning. I'm honestly sad that this is covered all the time because it's just absolutely gorgeous. Looking at the underside of this inlet manifold, you can get a perspective on how the low speed inlet manifold port uh, feeds from across the plane of the intake manifold and then into the engine. And once this butterfly valve is open, this runner becomes dramatically shorter for high RPM operation and high power. And then on the left side, we have these two bulbs that actuate the butterfly valves. And you can find these on a lot of Audi 4.2 liter motors. Um, these are really common. So if you ever, any, ever have any problems with those, um, check the Audi 4.2 first. And then if you ever have any like sort of sluggishness issues with your car, check these little plastic clips because they, they have a tendency to break. Then you can also check for actuation of these actual lever arms. And you can check to see if they're actuating properly or if they're misaligned or anything like that. And then last but not least, you have this beautiful runner assembly that holds those fuel injectors. And you can see the amount of detail that went into this. So you have these wonderfully CNC machined O-ring bosses. Um, good surface finish on here, except for a little bit of crud on mine. Don't worry about that. And then the CNC machine ports for the injectors. And then subsequently you have another O-ring body on the top surface that actually mounts to the intake manifold. And you can also see the wonderful port matching that Lamborghini did to match the port of the intake manifold to the port of this runner assembly. And I don't know if this was done by hand or if done with a CNC, but um, it's always nice to see stuff like that. And if you want to really optimize the flow coming through this runner, I would definitely polish this down and you could probably pick up maybe horsepower or two. It's always nice to see a little bit of attention to detail and how they port match these bodies together. And one last thing I want you to note is the fuel rail itself. Um, this is a wonderful piece. It is a return style fuel pressure system. So you have the feed on the inlet on the right, and then on the left, you have the return with a fuel pressure regulator. This is a 300 kPa Audi fuel pressure regulator. So if you ever want to upgrade this when you're doing like a turbo application or something like that, it's right here. It's an Audi part and you can get a, you can get a higher pressure rated one pretty cheap and easy. These injectors are also very cheap. The injectors that are designed for the 1.8T transverse motor. So you find this in like the new Beetle, Jetta, stuff like that. Um, Audi A4 really, I think is the B5. And if you ever need a service these, you can get, you can get these remanufactured, um, no sweat. They, they flow about 300 cc per minute. So uh, pretty decently flowing for a, for a naturally aspirated motor, but for any sort of turbo application, you're gonna wanna go with a, uh, an upgraded injector. And if you take your fuel rail out and your O-rings are busted up, these are standard size 14 millimeter O-rings and uh, they pop right off and you can pop new ones on if you need to. But um, these look pretty good on mine, so I'm not really gonna do that. So if you like this video and you like me going into every little detail about this intake manifold, I appreciate if you give me a comment and uh, give this video a like if it helped you. And if there's anything on this car that you want me to take apart in the future in detail for you on the channel, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. I'd like to hear from you. So until next time, thanks.